All right, so it's Tuesday, uh, day off. Gonna head over to the Ride Kitchen, which is the kitchen where we make everything, uh, all our cakes, and you get to see all the glorious production of it all. Um, let's talk something which I feel like is a problem. Lava cake. Lava cake has been bastardized, and I feel like we need to crack down on that. Because lava cake, the original one is called chocolate coulant, which is in French, flowing chocolate. Now, lava cake, what I find in some restaurants or even some recipes that I've seen, it's so simple, I get it, I get it. But why would you want to eat undercooked cake? That's just, it doesn't make sense. So if you add a little bit of extra effort, just a little bit more extra time, you can make this, instead of an undercooked cake, a liquid flowing glorious of ganache, which is a mixture of cream and chocolate and a bit of butter. I'll tell you what, it is a thousand times better than undercooked cake. Seriously. All right, so we're here at Ride, and this is where we make all the cakes. Come on. So yeah, this is the ride shop, and uh, what I'm here for is actually just raiding my own kitchen. I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of chocolate, get some ingredients, and mum looks after this place, so let's go say hi. So mum's picking flowers really nicely. I'm gonna steal some from her and see, hopefully she's okay with it. Is mum? Huh? Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna steal some flowers. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, thank you, thank you. This one from home as well, right? Is this from home? Yeah. Oh, then I don't need it. No, no more. Oh, no more. You took it all. Okay. So these are all homegrown. So nice. Can I take everything? Oh. Okay. Um, I don't think so. Oh, I'll get some fruit as well. Yeah. All right, thanks, Mom. Okay. Lastly, we're going to grab a heap of chocolate. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. This is the perks of having a dessert bar, unlimited chocolate. I don't even like chocolate. All right, we're back and we're gonna save the lava cake. The lava cake has been bastardized. You know you haven't had a good lava cake when you cut it open, it's just a thick goo. It should be flowing. Chocolate coulant, that's the OG Michelle Brass. So we're gonna do it justice. We're gonna save the lava cake today. So in a bowl here, I've got some butter and I've got some dark chocolate as well. And we're gonna melt the two. Now, this recipe is a little bit more unique because I've got some palm sugar instead of regular sugar. And the difference is the flavor and in terms of health wise, then again, we're having chocolate and butter, who cares? But flavor wise, it makes a huge, huge difference. We're gonna combine the palm sugar with the chocolate and butter, melt everything together. And in here as well, of course, with dessert, we're gonna add a little bit of salt. Your salt makes everything much better. So while the chocolate and butter and palm sugar is melting away, we're gonna add three eggs and three egg yolks. And since we have three egg yolks, we have three egg whites. So we're gonna combine egg whites with some sugar and we're gonna make an Italian meringue. So we're gonna pimp up this lava cake and turn it into something a little bit more unique. So what is chocolate coulant or what is a lava cake exactly? For it to be a proper lava cake, it needs to have a ganache center where it just flows out. And that's where it's called the flowing chocolate cake. And trust me with palm sugar, Chocolate coulon, coulon, couillon. Couillon means asshole in French. <laughs> chocolate asshole. <laughs> it's chocolate coulant, coulant. Coulon. Couillon. Couillon. So, while the batter is working away, we're going to combine it with some flour and some eggs and some egg yolks. The next thing we're going to do, meanwhile, is make the center filling, which is the ganache. 
In a small pot, I've got a bit of cream and we're gonna add a little bit of milk because when you add some milk, it's gonna loosen everything up. And what that's gonna do, so when you cut that cake open, it's gonna go explosion of chocolate everywhere. We're gonna bring the cream and milk to a boil and then we're gonna add our chocolate in. And when you're going out to buy palm sugar, you gotta make sure you get the good one. The one that is very, very dark like this and they come in cylinders. You don't wanna get the ones in a little block and it's very pale, it doesn't have that flavor. I used to eat this like candy. It's, it smells like Cuyon. <laughs> <laughs> it smells really good. I love palm sugar. <laughs> it smells like <laughs> it smells like a good going on. <laughs> uh, okay, so our cream and milk are boiling up. It's about a one-to-one -one ratio with the chocolate. So we're gonna add chocolate in. Okay, and now for the magic, everything's gonna be blended together. Now with a hand blender. Now into this, add a bit more luxurious flavor, texture, and sheen. We're gonna add some unsalted butter. About a tablespoon. And ganache is so easy. It's so easy, simple as that. Cream, milk, chocolate. Now for the butter. Watch it go shiny, it's gonna go super shiny. A couple of things we can do next. This into a jug. Sign it to a container. So the one in the container, we're gonna let it set overnight and that's gonna jam up and it'll make it really pliable for us to put into the lava cake batter. And in here, I have a silicon mold, a cylinder that kind of goes a little bit to fit inside here. That's a perfect fit. Just gonna pour a little bit in. You don't wanna go all the way up. Just leave about a centimeter gap. Pop this in the freezer overnight until it's frozen solid. All right, back to the batter. Back to the batter. Chocolate, melted, butter, almost. And it's okay if you have a little bit chunks of palm sugar because kind of adds a nice texture to it as well anyway. Next up, we're gonna fold in our eggs. So when you add chocolate with eggs, it goes really weird, it coagulates very quickly. Add the eggs in, slowly. It's nice and warm, so it's gonna cook the eggs a little bit too. So you can see the texture of the chocolate changes as it emulsifies. It's all goopy. Next, we're gonna sift in our flour. This is the biggest sift I have in... <laughs> nah, screw that. <laughs> Still gonna be one nice batter. So it's not gonna be lumpy. So that's flour these days. They're not as lumpy as they used to be. They're not as coarse as they used to be. It's, it's so processed that it's actually very fine. So as the flour hydrates, you wanna make sure this batter cools down before we fill it in. <laughs> gonna cool this down, chill a little bit. It's actually best overnight, but we're in a little bit of a rush. So it's more of a quick cook. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is coat the inside of this. You can coat it with spray oil and then cover the inside with baking paper. And the bottom, the most important thing is, you get some aluminum foil, fold it in half, and again. And this is gonna be the base to kind of hold the batter together. So you wanna tightly go up as you wrap. Okay. So create a little cup. Uh, traditionally, you'd get some butter or some oil and then you put some flour inside and then take it out. But we're not gonna need that. We're just gonna need a bit of oil or some butter to kind of hold the baking paper inside. And the baking paper is gonna help us release the cake. And you're gonna make sure that you butter the bottom of the foil as well. 
So that's that. Tuck the sides, push them down, making sure that it sticks. And it's okay if you have excess paper there, you can just put some more butter or some oil and it can stick. Like so. Repeat until you have all your molds done. Pop this into a tray. So now we're gonna pour our batter in just a little bit. About halfway. And then lastly, the fun part. So what you can do instead, you can actually just have a set ganache, pop a spoonful in there, or you can have the one set in the silicon mold. So we'll do two. So this one here I've got set inside a container and you can see a ganache is already nice and firm. And what you want to do is roll it into a bowl. It's not going to be as perfect as the one in the mold, of course, but it still does the job. All right, so I've got these ones set in the silicon mold and I'm just going to pop them out. We're going to skewer, skewer this and insert this in here carefully. Stab in the middle. All right, not too far in so you can release it. Pop this one, oh, let's go here. All right. And it needs to be perfectly centered. All right, that one's skewered a bit too much. All right, there you go. It needs to be in the center, not sunken in as well. Oh, and before I forget, now this one here, the lump, the free hand shaping one. Just shape it like that, nothing too fancy. And just pop that right in the center as well. Okay. And cover that one with chocolate as well. Now let's top it off. Scrape. Perfectly enough for three. Scrape. And lastly, Yes, just the right amount. Now we're gonna cook these bad boys in the oven at 165 degrees for about 30 or 28 minutes, I think. Can't remember. Let's try 20 minutes. Let's try 20 minutes, how that goes. While that's baking in the oven, we're gonna work on the garnish and I wanna do something a bit more different. More of like a, a messy looking cake uh, with a meringue. So we're gonna do Italian meringue and I'll show you a little piping trick as well. I'm gonna weigh out the egg whites, see how much. 95 or 94 grams. So double the sugar, 188. So 146, that's close enough. And you only need a little smidge of sugar. For Italian meringue, you want to get the sugar syrup up to 118 degrees. Thermometer. And just want to coat the water with the sugar. You don't want to stir it too much, if not it crystallizes. You want to make sure there's no fat inside the egg whites as well. Oh yeah, I completely screwed it up. It's crystallized. Crystallized. Why? You're supposed to dissolve. <laughs> Why are you solidifying? Let's take two. I crystallized the first batch. Don't touch it. You touch it, it crystallizes. I touched it, it crystallized. Just so annoying. So I cleaned out my pot, make sure it's nice and clean of any residue. So, this is at the moment 116. Okay, it's going a bit too quickly, but it's, it's hardly teasing 118. Usually when you hit 110 degrees, you wanna kind of uh, lower your heat and start whisking up your egg whites. So you wanna whisk the egg whites until they're soft peak. And then once this reaches temperature, just let it sit down on the bench until all that bubbles just kind of settle a little bit. Then what you want to do is start trickling in on the side of the bowl while you're whisking. Very slowly and speed it up. What this does, this cooks the egg whites while it's incorporating into it. So you want to whisk it until it completely cools down and it'll be super glossy. 
Sometimes you can add in some uh, orange zest or vanilla bean as well. It amps up the flavor and changes the whole meringue. All right, that's cooled down. Let's check it. Stiff peak. Yes. Giant meringue is cooked meringue. And the best thing about it is that it has this beautiful gloss that you, when you blow torch it, it caramelizes nicer. You try it with a French meringue, it won't work. Trust me, it will not work. Okay, into a piping bag and I'll show you a little piping trick. If you don't have those fancy nozzles, and I want to do this like nice kind of featherish kind of shape or make it messy, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Swing the bag. Get the air bubbles out. So the trick is, all right, you want to cut this on an angle. Like, oh no, it's crap scissors. Oh no. Why you not cut? like that. So when we pipe it, you can get nice shapes like that. Mm. So meringue's done. Okay, we're gonna get our plate and start plating up. All right, so I've got the meringue. I've got some nice flowers. I've got a freeze-dried fruit as well. You can use fresh berries, which makes it all the better. And a plop of ice cream cracking into that. Perfect. Thing is, I'm kind of nervous because I'm not sure if this is gonna work. It actually may not work. Uh, it could be a complete disaster. And if it is, what a waste. <laughs> got some flowers from mum. So I've got some freeze-dried mandarin segments. You can get these at specialty stores. Nice and crunchy, it's acidic. Flowers for some presentation and the meringue for kind of, almost like a s'mores lava cake. All right, moment of truth, oh my fuck. Les souffle. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. It's gonna spool everywhere. I'm scared that's gonna happen. Ah! No, it's fine. <laughs> ah! It's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And it's kind of pointless for me to run my knife through, but whatever. Just want to release it. This can go two ways, come out perfectly, you can cover that little hole, or a complete disaster. What am I even a pastry chef for? Oh, it's stressful again. All right. Oh, okay, it's coming off. Oh my God, it's coming off. Oh, it's going to explode. <laughs> We're not bringing it back. I just bastardized this one too. Oh no, I feel like it's gonna burst. Look at this chubby boy. Oh. Supposed to let it set for a while before releasing it. Oh, look at that jiggle. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. That one's gonna explode for sure. No, no foil stuck to it. Good. Oh, so hot. Where who? This is not what it's meant to be like, but it looks pretty damn good to me. So, we're gonna continue. So, I actually wanna just be a bit messy with this one. All right, that does look pretty ugly though. This is all about home cooking, man. Okay. I obviously did not save lava cake at all. This is not a cool aunt, this is a cool yon. Because <laughs> there's no little hole in the bottom. <laughs> Play touched. Whew. Need a bit more charriness. Uh, see, that looks so much better now. Hell yeah. That's not too bad, right? Not too shabby. Bit of this. Get it 
half, but, but, but. It's still hot. Stab that in, stab you in. Bit of, bit of unnecessary flat. Oh, this actually looks pretty good now. Oh, wow. Chef. My brother's still unimpressed. Final touches, I've got some rose petals. And, ta-da. So that is me trying to save lava cake, chocolate coulon. And it's not gonna be an undercooked cake inside. Look how chubby that is. Look how good that looks. If you're doing this at home, it's fun, okay? Get some ice cream on top of that. You don't need a meringue. We're gonna cut into this and we're gonna see this explode. Oh, okay, cut shot. Gonna go right down here. Oh! And wait for it. No, nothing. No, I'm kidding. Look at that. Yes. That's not undercooked cake. That is chocolatey goodness. A whole heap of it, or self-sourcing. That, guys, is my lava cake, but better. Sort of. <laughs> Ooh, can have a little bite. Chocolatey mess. Mmm. 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 That's so good. So that was the lava cake. Really hope you guys enjoy that recipe. And did we save it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I feel like that we need to go back and do it again. But you know what? We always have to learn and improve. Anyways, I'm feeling a bit peckish. So we're gonna get some burgers. And it's time to go incognito mode. Wait, wait, hold on. Bam. Ninja mode. Why the hell does it have to be closed? This bullshit. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm so mad. <sighs> I'm craving burgers as well. I'm actually so butt hurt. So I'm gonna go drive out somewhere else. Well, you can see my mood. It's just dropped hard. How annoying is that? Like. When you go somewhere and you think it's gonna be open and it's closed, it's, been, it's just as bad as like having food left over in the fridge. You're looking forward to it, you go home and someone ate it. It's just like that. A little bit worse, but whatever. Anyways, let's get the car. Okay, you know what? I am so sieves. <laughs> I'm just gonna go Uber Eats. Uh, <laughs> I'm so lazy. <laughs> I'm going to chill out at home while I chow on the burger. But for now, I'm kind of feeling a bit more peckish for some bubble tea. Now, these guys better be open. Yeah, no, they're open. Hey. Oh, that's so good. Brown mm -hmm. sugar pearl. It's freaking raining. Why? Storming tonight. Hi guys, I'm gonna head home, wait for the food. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time.